What's going on guys? Welcome back to the 4M Ranch channel. I'm Eric and today we're going to be doing a 100 hour review on the uh, new 2024 Bobcat T770. I got it at the beginning of summertime. I've uh, ran it for a little about a little over 116 hours now and I kind of want to talk about it and talk about some things that I don't like about it. Um, what I do like about it and uh, if I'd buy it again. So stay tuned and we'll get into the video. So this is a T770 like I said. It's 92 engine horsepower. It weighs with the 400 pound counterweight. It weighs almost right at 11,000 pounds. Um, it came with the severe duty tooth bucket, which I don't have on here. And uh, that bucket is another 820 pounds. So kind of a heavy machine, uh, but you can still haul it on a bumper pull trailer. Uh, the tracks are uh, like 78 to 79 inches wide, so it'll still fit on a standard uh, low boy bumper pull trailer. So this is a M series machine. So they've been making this style for quite some time. My T650 was a 2012 uh, that I upgraded from and it's pretty much the same style. Uh, cab layout's pretty much the same. So on this machine it's pretty well fully loaded with everything. It's got the automatic ride control, it's got high flow hydraulics, it's got uh, two speed, it's got the uh, bucket leveling, it's got the uh, hydraulic bob tatch on it. Um, of course I added the counterweight kit like I said earlier, 400 pounds rear counterweight. Uh, we got the windows tinted with some ceramic tint and a uh, 15%. We added this little bumper back here on the back because you see a lot of these where they're all bent up back here and maybe help keep from dinging up the tailgate if you backed up into a tree or something that'll catch it first. We got the uh, camera on it, back rear backup camera. And I added a uh, bob tatch cylinder guard on the front. So other than those things, this is how the machine came. It's got the uh, Bobcat uh, deuce on engine in it. It's a uh, four cylinder engine, 92 horsepower. Uh, it does require def fluid, so it has uh, for emissions, it's got a SCR on it. It does not have a DPF, so that's good. Um, so it just treats it with def fluid and that SCR, which is right here, I believe, or this one, one of the two. But anyway, that's the emission stuff it has. Um, so when we look here at the back, um, it's still the traditional M series where the engine is uh, mounted sideways in here, unlike the R series where they went straight in line with the machine. So we still have good uh, access to everything for service. Um, the only thing I've had to service on it is the oil change, and we did that at 50 hours. So you got your engine oil fill here, your engine oil dipstick here engine oil filter you still got to fuel it up from the back you got a big fuel filter here and i do believe this is actually a two micron fuel filter so that's a really good fuel filter uh, to keep your fuel clean for this uh, high rail <coughs> common rail system fuel system it's got uh, another little fuel filter right back behind this one so it's got two fuel filters on it um, but anyway, access is good. You got your starter here, your uh, AC compressor, your alternator. You can get to the belts uh, pretty good. You probably have to take some of this stuff off. But so what I've always liked about these is everything is right back here. Oh, and I added a, a block heater, and I have a video on installing that. It's a dry socket heater. It's super easy to install. So this winter time, when it gets cold, it'll fire up pretty good. You got your battery over here. Now these uh, 770s, and I don't know, I didn't pay attention to any, any of the uh, other models, but they've incorporated these two little engine bay cooling fans back here on the tailgate. And when you shut, shut the machine off, these fans will blow 
uh, outside cool air in here to cool us down to a certain temp and then they kick off but I've also noticed when the uh, engine oil tips and stuff on the machine get pretty high they uh, kick on and run as well so <clears throat> back up here you got your radiator uh, your fuel coolers just comes off this knob here pretty easy to get to all the stuff up here you take these screens off to clean them so they got the air filter and coolant reservoirs over here and then the hydraulic uh, oil tanks on this side and they've put some screens in here to help uh, with cooling and whatnot uh, on them on this side so you got your air filter box which is right here i haven't had to change it yet but that that might be the only thing that's kind of difficult to get to because the uh, old one used to be right here where this uh, exhaust piece is so over here pop this side off you got your uh, hydraulic tank there and you can clean this ac condenser out there's two little rubber tabs on the sides pop this up you can pull this up right here and uh, you can clean it out now this machine also comes with a uh, reversing fan as well the automatic reversing fan so ever so often it'll kick on and uh, blow the debris off the top of the screen so we got screens here for the exhaust and then again the coolant reservoirs up there at the top So another thing they kind of changed is the decal package. You notice they've uh, changed the look of that. Um, they've changed the hydraulic oil. You either got blue from the factory or red, depending on where your machine's going. And I, I'm not a fan of this system, but we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> the track frames on this, I really like them. They're easy to clean out. The, all the debris just basically falls off in there real easy to get in here all the hoses uh, for the hydraulic drive motor are protected see there's no way sticks or anything could get in there and rupture a hose like on some other machines and if you look up in here it's all just completely enclosed up in here no no exposed hoses or nothing and i really like that feature about it <clears throat> It's got a uh, dual flange roller on the front for a little bit smoother ride. We're still rolling with the uh, single roller in the back. Back tension system, you still tension it with the grease gun, um, but they did change it to where it is one little grease circ that you let the grease out and you tension it through the same grease circ, where on the other one you had one to relieve the pressure and one to tighten it, and I like that a lot better. I don't like the... Uh, single one because when you put your grease gun on there it just gets so much pressure on it that when you pop it off it just oozes grease everywhere so i don't really uh, care for that single <clears throat> tension uh, zerk there on that but <clears throat> as we come around here to the front this is that uh, bob tatch cylinder guard i was talking about that i added on um Seems like it had made more sense to cover them from the front as well, but it's pretty well covered though from the back from anything. Uh, we got the uh, seven pin connector, standard flow, high flow. I think the standard flow on this machine is like uh, 20, it's 23 gallons a minute. And then the high flow is like 36 gallons a minute, but I'll double check and put it on there. Um, as we get in the cab this is a two-piece cab so it's not all one unit so they got some foam right here now it does get some dust in here just depending on where you're operating in here in the cab we got uh, the auto level on the tilt for the bucket positioning which is right here you can turn it on or off we got the uh, ride control can turn it on auto or off 
Over here on this side, we got the uh, throttle. We have the reversing fan. You can turn it on auto or you can push it up and turn it on or turn it off. You got your uh, bob attach uh, control here. And then you got your selectable joystick control here. So you can run an H pattern, which is not fun, or you can run it in ISO. I prefer ISO H patterns, retarded. But anyway, we got the backup camera up here. Uh, so really the only new thing layout in this cab is this screen over here. And this is a pretty sweet display. But yeah, so we're at 116 hours on the dock. So I was hoping to do this video right at 100, but we've had it at a job and uh, I've been working. So the, this is the fuel gauge. This is the coolant temp. Um, you got your automatic idle, which if that's on, the machine will be at full throttle. And I got it set to auto idle at three, three seconds, I believe. But this is the deaf foot indicator, so it's at half a tank, and full is four bars. Now, I'm really impressed how well this thing is done on deaf foot. I filled this thing plumb full when it was brand new with two hours on it, and I have not filled it up since, and it's still got half a tank, so it does really well on that. We've got AC vents up here, one big one, one small one. We got some in the back here. Same on this other side. Windows open from the front. And then we got the uh, old standard display up here, which they've had for quite some time. So it's deluxe panel, keyless start, it's coded. So you got to type a code in to start it. You can keep track of your hours. You can keep track of the job hours. You can come over here. Um, keep track of your maintenance. So the next maintenance is due in 85 hours. Um, you got all your vitals. So you got your RPMs, got your oil pressure, coolant tip, uh, how much fuel per hour you're burning, battery voltage, uh, hydraulic pressure, hydraulic temperature, and engine oil temp. So pretty good range of uh, parameters there. Um, you can do some other stuff. They got all the bobcat attachments different stuff you can cycle through all of them and they kind of tell you what they do it's kind of cool but then we got the backup camera right there we got uh, bluetooth radio down here two vents for your feet two speakers ac controls uh window wiper fluid it's got the uh wiper up here the uh, wash nozzle they've moved up here above um, we got a few little things on here rpms battery voltage drive mode so there's three drive mode sensitivities dr1 2 and 3 i run on dr2 um, you can set if you're veering off to one side when you're driving you can restrict the flow a little bit so it drives straight or if you're running an attachment that's pulling the machine like a trencher, you can adjust it there. Um, maintenance, and then if you got any codes. So you got joysticks that are mounted to the seat. The seat is air ride. There's a control right here. And then back here in the back, there's a switch. I don't know if you can see it, but right there for a heated seat. So you got the joysticks mounted to the seat, which I like. They are adjustable forward and backwards. You got uh, foot throttle down here. Quite a bit of good leg room side to side. Pretty good room uh, front and back. But overall, pretty comfortable cab for the most part. Um, the bolts to get the cab up or right here on each side so you remove those and uh, you can raise the cab so that's pretty much the cab layout it's got uh, I just say 18 inch tracks but they're like 17.9 or 0.8 one of the two 
Um, but I, I just call them 18 inch tracks. All right, so that's pretty much a rundown of the machine. Oh, we got the deaf fluid goes in right here. There's where you pour in your government juice. So, uh, grease circs. There's uh, one on each cylinder. There's one up here for this one. Then there's two right here for this bar. Then there's one on each side for this pivot point. And then there's one right here for this pivot point on both sides. And on the front, you got uh, two of them on each cylinder, one top and bottom. And then you got uh, one in here for your pins, for your wedges. And then one down here on each side on the bottom of the bob attach plate. And then uh, one on each side here for this um, hydraulic cylinder that runs across. So pretty easy to grease. Everything's fairly easy to get to. Um, washing it out, like I said, the track frames are good. Um, the engine compartment having these holes back here right here you can kind of get in there and wash out debris so there's you know plenty of room you can get to it to uh, keep it cleaned out all right so now that we've kind of gone over the layout of the machine i'm going to go over a few things that i've came to notice that i hate about this machine so number one so far is this hydraulic uh, color coded system it was all well and good when Bobcat had the all-season flood and it didn't matter what the temperature was. But now that they've came out with this blue for cool climates and red for warm climates, it's just uh, kind of hard to keep up with. So especially for us being in Oklahoma, because it's literally, if you look go on Bobcat's website, they got the oil on there, the blue and the red, and then they got a map of the U.S., and then there's a line drawn through it, which Oklahoma is all red, but as you get into the bottom part of Kansas, there's a line. So if you're on the northern part of Kansas and Missouri, you're supposed to use blue, but if you're below that, you're supposed to use red. But it says to use the color which you operate most. Well, in Oklahoma, it's literally 90 to 110 degrees from July to September so that's three months out of the year and they recommend that you use uh, the red anything above 90 degrees and then below that it says in which you operate most so technically we spend more time of the year below 90 degrees so what do you run you run the red or you run the blue I don't know I think it's just stupid um, but it says for whichever region the machine shipped to and all these new machines at White Star have the blue fluid in them so i don't know it uh it doesn't it runs a lot hotter on the hydraulic temperature than my t650 did um but i don't know if you if you used to be running a mulcher on it when it was 100 degrees outside it'd probably get pretty hot so you'd probably want to switch it over to the red fluid now they do say that you can mix the red and blue fluid together and it won't hurt anything so i have uh, to top up that reservoir i bought red um, to refill it but what happens like when you go to a rental yard and they they do say that this is more particular to the r series machine on which uh coolant you have in it though too and it doesn't really pertain really to the m series from all the stuff um, that i've looked up but they still do come with blue but what happens if you have an r series machine say like a t86 and you're running red coolant in it and you go rent an attachment from joe blows rental and then you get some other hydraulic oil that's supposedly incompatible or can't be mixed and it damages your hydraulic system then what then they're not going to warranty it because it literally says on there that incompatible fluids will void the warranty so i i don't know that's just something stupid in my opinion but uh i don't think i'm going to worry about it too much i've talked to the dealer about it they don't seem concerned um with mixing them so 
other than that we ain't gonna worry about that um, the next thing uh, that I do not like is when I went to change the oil on this thing it was actually a real pain in the butt first of all this oil drain hose is so big that it barely wants to fit through the little thing that you got to get it through and it comes out down here the uh, crimping piece that um, holds the hose to the fitting on the end is just too big to go through the hole so I had to get a hammer and a punch and put on the shoulder uh, basically of this crimp piece and sit here and tap it to get it to go through the hole because it's such a tight fit and then it was a pain to get it back through so that needs addressed either a smaller hose or figure out some way um, to make that uh, hose fit through there better um, the other thing is the t650 when you refilled the engine oil it was a straight three gallons this is like i don't even remember it was like three point uh We'll just say 3.12, for example. Well, what's 0.12 in gallons? You gotta sit here and do some sort of stupid math equation to figure out how many ounces. I think it ended up being three gallons and uh, like 42 ounces or something like that. So you have to get a funnel and basically measure out to make sure you get the right amount of oil. But if you read in there, it just says that the oil level um, will be at the top of this dot here. So I don't know, it'll take some getting used to. Once I get it dialed in, just put three gallons and 42 ounces in it, but it'd just be a lot simpler if it'd just be three gallons and you put three one gallon jugs in there and you're done. You don't have to mess with it. But not a fan of that. Um, the other thing that I don't like is this camera. Now this is supposed to be the Bobcat version camera and if you go online it's around $700. But for my T650 I literally have the same setup but I bought an AI Ag Cam off Amazon, wired it into the factory system, had it set up just like the factory one and it was $300. This thing is like $700 to $750 and it is not worth it because the clarity of it sucks. The screen up there is kind of pixelated, so if you're going to get a camera, I'd probably just get the uh, aftermarket, and uh, you can probably get a lot better clarity, but this Bobcat version of this uh, camera is not worth $700, I can tell you that. Now, they have a different one. They got uh, Voyager, but it's like $1,300, but Voyager, they're good cameras and they have them on motorhomes and stuff. And we got them on our uh, backup cams uh, on our fire engines at work and they're really good cameras. So I don't even know what brand this is, Chinese crap, I guess, but. The next thing is the AC fan. Now it only it has one less vent, but those other two, or that first one's bigger, but the fan speed in this thing does not blow that hard. If you've ever been in the Bobcat excavators, it blows super hard. I believe my T650 fan system blew harder than this one, but it just doesn't seem like um, the output of air coming out those vents is that good. So whatever squirrel cage they're putting in the HVA system on the track hose they need to put them in these uh, skid steers so other than that you can see this rear view camera just how pixelated it is now I didn't have to buy this camera it came with the machine so and they installed it so I'm not going to complain about it too much because it came with it but I'm just saying if you were going to buy it separately with your own money don't waste the money on the 700 dollars one from bobcat because i don't think it's worth it in my opinion for the quality so another thing uh that i don't like is these vents here uh, to defrost the windows in the winter time so they're just angled uh towards the window so 
My T650 had a little scroll wheel over here. You could either completely close the vent for summertime or you could open it and it would angle defrost this way or you could set it to defrost towards the front. Now this one, you can see it just uh, shoots air right down on the windows. And when it's like 80 degrees or so and you have the AC going, this will get humidity all over it and really fog the window up down to about like right here on both sides and you can't really see out of them. So I'd like for them to go back to the vent that you can actually use the thumb wheel and uh, change it. Uh, so you can use the thumb wheel and shut those off in the summertime. Another, another thing I wish they'd update This isn't really something I don't like, but if they're going to keep making these M-series machines, I wish they'd update this display. They could make literally take a screen like this that's touch screen, like the R-series, and why can't they incorporate that in here and do the Bluetooth radio and all that in here and the service and all that. They've literally been using this screen since, I don't know, my 2012 had it. And I think they used it a couple of years even before that still yet. So if they're going to keep making it, they need to come out with an update for that. That'd be nice. And then the last thing here that we're going to talk about that I'm not a fan of is how heavy this dang cab is. So it literally almost takes two people to lift this up. Once you unbolt it, there's the spring shock assist really doesn't kick in until it gets over halfway up so I don't know if they need some stronger gas shocks for it or what but basically how I do it is undo those two bolts stay in here and push get it up and then grab it from the bottom and lift it up then I feel like I have to go to the chiropractor and get adjustment for spinal compression afterwards but I wish they'd get some stronger shocks or something to lift that cab up so that's pretty much all I found that I don't like about it <clears throat> so I have I have 116 hours on this thing so far and I have only had one code come up and uh, the only problem was is over here I'll show you it was about 102 degrees and I was running the brush cat, uh, brush hogging a bunch of uh, grass and blackberries and I got a code for high inlet air temperature. And what it was, was up here. So that reversing fan will kick in and blow anything off the screen, but it won't get stuff off these. And the air filter intake is right here and what had happened it was there was a bunch of grass covering this and the air that it was sucking in was just too hot and it tripped a code so all i did was come back here scrape these off let it idle for a minute and the code went away and never came back so other than that code i have not had a single problem with this machine in 116 hours uh, so I'm very thankful for that, and uh, I do know if I did have a problem, uh, White Star would be here in no time to get it fixed for me, and if they couldn't get it fixed that day, they'd bring me a loaner. So that the White Star dealer is really good on service. They, they're timely. When you want to take your machine in to get it repaired, they get to it pretty quickly. Um, they do what they say they're going to do. They usually always have parts on hand. Um, that's another big reason I like the Bobcat stuff is because of our dealer. It's fairly close and uh, my salesman actually lives uh, probably about five or six miles from me. So if I ever need anything, he could always run it by. Um, but yeah, customer service and parts availability is a big factor uh, from Bobcat there on that. 
So my favorite thing, feature on this machine probably is that automatic ride control. That is That makes the machine so much smoother riding when you're carrying something going across the field and that loader has that shock absorbing cushion. That is just awesome. Uh, and the two speed, this thing is super fast. It's like 10 point, I think it's like 10.3 or 10.7 and two speed, probably one of the fastest uh, machines Bobcat makes, I'm pretty sure on the skid steer loaders and it's probably one of the quickest ones out there um, that I've seen. So the two speed is relatively quick on it. Um, uh, one other thing that they've changed that I noticed uh, that I really like about it is when you go to get fuel and I made a separate video on this I may splice it in here um, just to show you what I'm talking about but on my 650 every time you'd fill this thing up it just when it'd get close to full it just burnt fuel out and get all over everything make a huge mess but now they've taken and uh, made some actual fuel vents so they got a tank vent um, and a a return line whatever you call this right here teed in for a vent so if you come in here and look here's the vents you can see they got one right here right there's a vent for the fuel and then there's another one right up in here somewhere oh, right here Right there, black cap. So yeah, so when I fill this thing up, it doesn't splash fuel all over me anymore. So that was a great fix on that deal. But anyway, what else? So another thing that I noticed on this, I don't know what year they started this either, but my uh, 650 didn't have it because I had to replace a line. But these hydraulic hoses that power this bob tatch, they put splices in them. So if you blow a hose right here, you can just change it, which is really nice because on the 650, I had to pull the hose all the way up through the boom and uh, do it. And I know a lot of people complain about having hoses in the boom because it's a pain in the ass to get them out. But if you tie a string to this and pull it through, back there you can literally pull it through no problem and i like the hoses in the boom because it keeps them protected i also like the couplers in the boom because it keeps them protected i hate the machines that have the couplers sitting up here like kubotas i think it's retarded and the lines running down the inside of the boom it's just i don't, I don't like that i like everything sealed to be in there and uh, i think bobcat's always done a great job of keeping their hoses protected because on that 650 being a 2012 you ain't got to worry about them getting rotted the only spot you got to worry about it is back here but they're all covered and uh, this hose uh, hose wrap so that pretty well keeps them protected keeps them from uh, damage and you can see they've added some hard lines here and there um, to where it used to be rubber hoses on some of the older ones but other than that so another thing that's good about this machine is the chain down point so you literally can hook your chain there on both sides and you got chain down points back here there's two little spots uh, one on each side to boom it down i did see on the new uh, next gen cat 285s they got some hooks on these track frames kind of like dozer and stuff i kind of like that idea too as well if they ever put some right there because you ain't gotta get up on climb up on your trailer and try to run a chain but i can reach it on the ground right here but for some of the ones like they got a tie down point up here which i don't i'm not sure why they even put that one there because you really can't even get to it and if you pulled your chain it's going to be hitting the the boom but i did notice that they took out the little um there used to be two little access covers here at the front uh to clean out debris from the belly of the machine but now they just got them completely underneath so 
So I did have a couple people ask me on some videos if I still like this machine. The answer is yes, I love it. Um, there are some things, like I said, I don't like about it. But overall, I believe the Bobcats are real good machines. Um, I've ran all the other ones, but I've ran Bobcats the most. I've been running Bobcats probably ever since I was seven years old, and I've always liked them. Um, I think every other manufacturer probably makes a pretty good, decent machine. You know, John Deere's good, Cat's good, I'm sure Kubota's are good. Um, it just basically comes down to features and pretty much what you like um, and your personal preference. And the big one is dealer support. So, and that's one good thing I got with the Bobcat is good quality machine and good dealer support. So, and then other than that, every other attachment that I have is pretty much Bobcat. Which brings me to another point before we go, the Bobcat Electronics. Now, John Deere has a 14 pin connector. Cat has a 14 pin connector. And I think Kubota and most of the other ones have the 14 pin. Now, they may be pinned a little bit differently from each other, but Bobcat has this proprietary seven pin connector that no other machine has to run um, the electronic solenoids on the hydraulic attachments. Now, with that being said, they kind of limit you um, to uh, what attachments you can use on this machine. So the seven pin from everything I've looked up is it communicates uh, with the machine with a, a CAN bus system, I believe, and they all have a little controller. And we'll walk over here and I'll show you what I'm talking about on the soil conditioner. So right here on this dozer blade, you got a seven pin connector and you gotta have that because it does more than one function. So this thing can angle left to right and then tilt uh, left to right. So in order to do that, the skid steer only has one set of hydraulic remotes. You have to have electronic solenoids in here to divert the flow to get different functions out of it. So Bobcat, to do that, instead of using the standard like AC uh, connector, uh, they use a seven pin CAN bus system, which has a little ECM brain controller type thing in here to communicate with the machine. So right here you can see on the soil conditioner, here's the little brain computer thing right in here. And that's about a little $800 part. But anyway, all the wiring, the solenoids hook up to it and then go to that seven pin connector to the Bobcat. So if you have all Bobcat attachments, you ain't got nothing to worry about. But if you want to buy and run a different attachment, that's not going to work on your Bobcat machine unless you have them put on the 14 pin connector kit. So they do make a 14 pin kit that you can add on to these and it kind of just sticks up here and then this wire gets zip tied um, through some of these holes down the boom and I just, I don't like that because um, A, that kit's like, like over a thousand dollars I believe for it to just have a wire zip tied down the boom. Now I have seen some guys take a mag drill and a hole saw that thing is about, that uh, 14 pin plug is about the size of one of these hydraulic fittings, but I've seen them come down here and hole saw a hole and then mount it like this seven pin is with the nut and then run the wire through the boom. But the problem is if you have seven pin attachments and 14 pin, atta 14 pin attachments, you gotta come back here and swap these plugs. So right here, this is basically where they hook into the computer on the machine with diagnostic software. And then this runs the seven pin, communicates uh, through this line, goes up through the boom. But the 14 pin kit comes with a little controller that mounts up in here. And then when you wanna run the 14 pin, you gotta unplug this and plug it in. Um, 
but I think they got like a little junction box thing now, but I still think you have to swap them, I'm pretty sure. But nonetheless, you still got to do something with that. So if you want to just run 7-pin Bobcat stuff, you shouldn't have any problem. But if you're wanting to buy uh, other brand attachments, uh, you're going to run into that issue. Now, I know Skid Steer Genius makes an adapter um, to go from that 7-pin to the 14-pin. But I don't know how well they work. And they're about 1000 bucks as well. So I've read uh, people have had bad luck with them, and some people say they have good luck. And I think it says on their website that they're non-returnable once they've been used. So I don't know. I haven't bought one. So anyway, guys, I know this video is pretty lengthy, but if you stuck through it the whole way and watched it and you're thinking about buying one of these machines, hopefully it helped you out. Um, there's some videos on them out there, but none that i specifically wanted to uh, view as far as the details on how somebody liked their machine um, like this one's going to be so hopefully if you were like me looking for that video this will be the one for you so anyway that being said if you like the video make sure you hit that like button and if you're not already subscribed make sure you subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next one